Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a manufacturer I have not tested before, Sea-Do. Now there is apparently a plastic version of this keyboard, uh, I've seen it listed as the GK67 uh, under the Sea-Do brand and under a couple of different other brands. Uh, Epo Maker is currently selling this but I'd recommend purchasing it either directly from Sea-Do or another. All right so let's take a look at this V65. It's a 65% with a knob. This is an aluminum kit. Uh, minimalist design inheriting the originality style. This is exactly what I like. Thank you. I guess that's supposed to be what I say. Um, as you can see here, we got the layout. It is, um, I mean, it's just a standard 65% layout. And basically, they've just replaced the delete key because uh, it, it's it's a compact at 65 and they've replaced what would normally be the delete key with a knob so and this is via compatible out of the box but it's also dual mode bluetooth and wired so hmm, interesting because usually via and qmk aren't compatible with wireless although i know keychron has overcome that in a few of their models all right so let's see first off what we've got in the box we've got two little uh, nice little container boxes right here. I like when they separate out the accessories. It looks like we've got here. All right, this looks like some feet. There's something else in here. Oh, oh here's some what looks like gasket socks and some more feet. Okay. Sounds good. We got some feet and some gaskets. Hoping for a little bit of something more exciting there, but I don't know. And what do we have in the secondary box? Looks like we've got the cable and your standard switch puller, as well as a. I like when they include tools. We got a little Allen wrench here, and we've got the keycap puller. And a nylon braided USB A to USB C cable. Not bad, it's squarish. I prefer when the USB C part isn't square and blocky like that. But it should fit this keyboard just fine. So we'll just go ahead and put this stuff back as we won't be needing it for this review. And for some reason, I thought this was a bare bone kit, so apparently I was wrong or mistaken. I probably was looking at a different listing and then just chose the Amazon listing. So let's go ahead and put these two back here. Put the little finger holes up so we can get it out easy. I'll go ahead and take a look at the key. So here we are with the CIDO, C I D O O, V65, a via wired Bluetooth dual mode keyboard. Um, it is very solid. I mean, this aluminum, I gotta say, it's actually quite nice. Oh, so we've got feet that is it don't tell me the screws are underneath the feet all right um manufacturers when you do this this is silly i mean there are so many other ways i mean all you had to do was add a little bit of plastic like a little like funnel plastic down at this so that it could be shoved into the hole and not actually taped on um, that right there is honestly an instant turnoff because it's basically saying we don't want you to get inside of this keyboard um, yet they include extra gaskets so I don't know all right so ooh, we, we have a definite amount of flex on this keyboard out of the box I mean look at that this is a this is a lot of flex now, it feels like a linear switch. What do we have in here? Cork? All right, this is a uh, dustproof stem, five pin. Oh, it's got two holes. I don't think I've seen that molding before. And it says that it's 
a quark. Q U A R K. Q U A R K. Huh. I have not seen this switch before, so it is south facing. And it does look like there's already either an IPX pad or a whole sheet um, on there. So that's actually not quite interesting. Different switch now. It is a. Uh, appears to be slightly long pole I would guess probably two tenths maybe three tenths of a millimeter shy of a four millimeter travel um, and it might actually be lewd because there's no spring ping that I can hear I wonder if these switches are pre lubed it's a light linear I would guess between 50 uh, 45 and 55 grams of weight it's not that heavy but if we take this apart yep these are definitely pre-lubed you can see the lubrication on the pole and on the sides got a two-stage spring it's not gold-plated um, does appear to have a slight amount of lubrication which isn't always a nice thing because I mean Nothing special about it, but nothing bad. But there's no spring paint, so that's nice. So, lightly lubricated switches that don't have ping, always a nice thing. That this keycap set does appear to be cherry, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is a, uh, they are a die sub, right? So that's a die sub kit. And the body on these, I'm gonna say one point. Four? That's what I'm guessing. 1.3. All right, I was almost there. So 1.3 is the size of the body. They do not include any extra keys. They're doing this, which honestly, that's kind of cheap. Why don't you just include some extra keycaps? Literally five more keycaps, four more keycaps to switch out for Windows and Mac. I mean, most people are only going to be using one or the other. It's very rarely that you're going to be switching out from Mac to Windows on a daily basis. Um, I mean, I, I use a Mac as a separate keyboard altogether. That one stays connected to the Mac. Um, and I only use the Mac when I really, 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 really have to. I'm not saying anything against Apple, but I just I won't use it as an operating system. But I won't use Windows as an operating system either. So there's that. So we've got, it's actually a decent case. I've got to say, I like it. It's got a good heft to it. I do like the lines on it. I, I like, it's it's a little old school to me. It looks like it's a pricier board. Um, but this with the, um, the screws underneath, it's just, uh, it's quite disappointing, I got to say. But we're going to go ahead and, pop them off and take a look anyway um, but anytime a manufacturer puts this and the, the thing is it's like wait a minute all right we don't want you to get in there but here's an extra set of gaskets well then you do want me to get in there oh and here's the tool to open it up oh so you do want me to get in here but you're gonna put feet I mean even just move the screws over and put a little cap to cover them up but I just you don't you don't put screws to access the interior underneath something that uses adhesive. I mean, it's just, it's, it's basically telling the consumer stay out. It's almost like a stay out sign. So I got to say, CD, if you're watching this, please don't do that. Don't do this. I mean, cause so far I'm liking the keyboard, but this right here, this is, is, uh, the equivalent of like 10 little bad things found, you know, found. Right now, I am leaning towards not keeping it uh, because of this. Because it's like, are you a kit that I can get into and modify? Or are you a keyboard that you just want me to stay the way that it is and not touch it? And you just pretend to be a kit by including extra feet. And uh, so I was wondering why they included two sets of extra feet. Well, because you're probably going to lose some of that adhesiveness 
opening and closing it a couple of times. So it's like it's sending mixed messages and that's not very cool there for right now. And let's go ahead and all right. So we have this attached to the this way. All right, so we've got the daughter board. Oh, well. Well, that's great. This pin, and I did stab myself. Uh, oh, this is shoddy workmanship. All right, I was able to get it back in there, but who knows if it's gonna stay when I try to go and plug it back in. Um, now let's be careful of the battery. That's a shoddy workmanship right there. That's the first time that's the first time I have unplugged the daughter board and a pen came out. Uh, it's not properly set in here. It wasn't properly. Um, these things have to be crimped. And see how it's loose? That's not supposed to be that way. So, And because I don't have the tool, I don't even know if it's going to work. But well, let's go, go ahead and try to get this one out. All right. So we have a battery here. It doesn't. Uh, this is a 3,000 milliamp hour battery. So we don't have any bottom case foam, but we do have this foam behind the uh, PCB, and the uh, the encoder does seem to be a part of the PCB. So. All right, well, if you can't get the knob off, it's kind of kind of pointless. All right. A lot of leftover flux. This is not a good thing. I don't like seeing that, especially around the knob, because it's like, uh, did they mess up? Did they overdo it? What's going on? And we can see the radio, uh, it's probably the RGB, oh no, those are probably the RGB controllers. That could be the MCU. I do not see a reset button though. Usually when you have an open source, I mean, I know it doesn't say QMK, but it does say VIA. So QMK is usually when you need the bootloader mode, but I don't see a reset button anywhere here this side anyway but the uh, gaskets are a tad bit crooked which uh, you know always something you want to see right but uh, this knob is what's up oh, well there all right so we got the knob off Pull the top plate off. Let's see what we've got. So we do have a uh, sandwiched foam between the plate and the PCB. We have a PC, a polycarbonate plate. Um, we have, okay, we have the ability to have a screw and stabilizers, though does the plate give us enough room to put those in? don't think so. Looking at the plate, I don't know if there's enough room. I mean, it's, it's a plate mounted. Um, oh, these stabs are actually quite well placed on there. Um, you can tell here there's a nice gob of lubrication, but then you look on this side and there's none. None to speak of. Oh, oh there's a little bit. So, very uneven 
uh, lube distribution. And uh, though you have the possibility for screw and stabilizers, I don't think that these that this plate will work. If I decide to keep it, which right now I'm leaning towards not keeping it because of I mean there's build issues here. We got the problem with how the screws are hidden, and then we've got that that daughter board connector which was not properly mounted. So I don't think there's really much for me to take a look at here. So I'm going to just go ahead and put it back together. I didn't want to do a full tear down. I just kind of wanted to get an idea of what we had under here. But we're going to see if the keyboard actually still works with that cable. Space bar right there. All right. Yeah, because this even has the holes for the um, spaces for the screw and stabs. But I don't think the plate would allow screw and stabs. Unless I keep it, I'll find out for sure. But I do kind of like the beige color that it has. Um, beige is really, to me, a uh, very retro feeling. All right, that's in. That was a little too tight there, but you get what you get, right? All right, so now I'm going to try to see if we can... Uh, this way and it goes this way. Let's see if we can keep that this puppy connected. All right, the cable is in there. It appears to be connected appears to be locked in there so we may have saved us saved ourselves there but like I said you guys have seen how many keyboards I've done right that's the first time that's ever happened to me I'm pretty careful about removing these I've been working on PCs since the 90s um, and dealing with way way more fragile cables so I know when uh, something's bad from the manufacturer uh, that's that um JST connector was not properly crimped onto that cable. So let's put, go ahead and put these screws back in here. And this is exactly why you don't use double sided feet or adhesive feet on top of screws. It's just, that irks me. All right, I'm gonna assume this is an on and off button. There is no indicator. Uh, I get that this is aluminum, but even, you know, screen silk, silk screening something on there to, you know, let you know this is on, this is off. I guess it's, or maybe uh, our daughter board just didn't work. Looks like we've got some light here, and we do have south-facing, correct? Yep, this is south-facing LEDs. All right. and it does seem to be working, but I don't know what that switch does. So, all right, this kit might be a little, um, the design has some issues, but it does sound pretty good. Function question mark. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Actually going through all the LEDs and testing them. Upon initial impression, I like it, but then I open it up or even before I open it up and I realize, oh look, the, the screws are under the feet, which um, I did the RK881, the Royal Kludge's new gasket mount keyboard and same thing. It's like, it, it might as well be a sign of, hey, this is your product, but don't get into your product. Despite the fact 
that this one actually comes with extra gaskets and extra feet because, oh, well, you're going to have to stick the feet back on. That's a very poor design, especially currently the hobby is you buy a keyboard and you tune it. Regardless of the price, you know, tuning the keyboard is for a lot of us half the fun. You know, getting in there, see how it's built, see what, you know, all oh, this material, how this sounds, how that sounds, how this switch sounds, so on. So I, I feel that that's kind of a deterrent uh, from this keyboard, which just kind of sucks because otherwise I tend to like it. I'm not a fan of this, but this can be, I can replace the keys. That's not a big problem. But you're doing an aluminum kit. It's $129, great price, but why are you skimping out and not including four extra keys so that I can I can choose whether I'm a Windows guy or a Mac guy or just neutral and say, you know, code or whatever. Um, so I, that, it, it, it bugs me. It just bugs me because it's like, how much does four keycaps cost you? Is it really going to make a difference in your profit margins? But so uh, unfortunately, I tend to ask questions like that. And then that leads me to say, well, what was going on? You know, and in my head, I try to think what was going on in their boardroom meeting or their you know group meeting, the designers meeting and how they said, hey, let's go ahead and, you know, put this keyboard out as it is. So honestly, I'm on the fence on it. I'm going to have to use a little bit and I'm going to have to play around with Maya. Um, but for right now, it's like it's it. it it's like, hey, this is a great first run on, you know, I believe this is their first aluminum kit based on what I saw on their website. It appears to be. Um, like I said, it's it seems to be that they just took the GK87, uh, I think they call it, or GK67, um, and kind of just made it metal. But I haven't seen that one, so I cannot say that for sure. But what I can say is that this one, like I said, it has a decent weight. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the knob. Uh, you're not going to be able to get much bigger of a knob in there because it'll actually start hitting the sides. I wished it was out just a little bit so that I could add some different knobs. Um, I know they're sticking to the 65%. I don't like that the knob is on the PCB because the USB-C is on a daughter board and there's definitely a lot of flex. At $130, it's hard for me to recommend this, especially since, I mean, like I said, not friendly into getting in and then the jst connector not properly crimped i mean that you could see when i pulled it out the crimp wasn't it was open still because it wasn't closed it wasn't properly crimped uh, i don't know i mean i would assume they're doing that by hand but where's qaqc you know they should unplug it plug it back in at least once because all you had to do was you, you saw i pulled it out and that pin just came on out with it because it wasn't crimped into the JST plastic part of the connector. That's a fail. I mean, I knew how to stick it back in, but I mean, if I take that back apart, it's going to come loose again. And the only way for me to fix it is to get a crimper. Um, and I don't have a crimper for that particular size. I have a crimper for some bigger ones, but I have to get a specific crimper specifically for that size of pins or just take all of them out and you know replace it with you know what was it i think it was a six or an eight pin jsc connector and redo all the pins and put them in there and crimp them properly but that that one wasn't crimped properly so i uh i don't know yeah i uh for right now i cannot recommend this board i don't know if i'll be coming back to it or not but um it's kind of big fails on in my book i think the, the stock sound test i think it's going to sound really nice i don't think that this board sounds bad but i think that it could incur technical issues going along i mean because if i were to keep this I'm de i would definitely be putting some case dampening in there as it has done right now and i'd probably be making some changes maybe take the foam off the back of the pcb and do a tempest tape uh do scrolling stabilizers if the plate allows which i really don't think that it does and the book doesn't say anything about it so it i, I really honestly i mean if you want a board that's going to work for you and that you want a board that you can get in there and modify more than once if you like without having to worry about the stickiness of the feet um, or losing the feet, then I, I can't, I can't just, I just can't recommend this. Let's get technical. 
Today we're taking a look at the Sea-Doo V65, an aluminum 65% width knob via keyboard. Um, it does have Bluetooth and USB-C wired only. Uh, it does not have 2.4 gigahertz dongle. At its chin, it is, sits at 23.5 millimeters above the surface and its back sits at 35.5 millimeters giving you one typing angle of seven degrees. It comes with a 2300 milliamp hour battery and weighs a total of 1329 grams. It currently MSRPs for $129.99. It sells by various retailers, but it is a Sea-Doo product. All right, so in closing, I, I cannot recommend this keyboard. While I was pausing to do some uh, technical specs on it, I was like, oh, let me go ahead and try uh, Bluetooth mode, which function Z, and then the Z starts blinking. Oh. See, that's, is that on or is that off? Yeah, I think this is on. Now it's on. All right. Connected. All right. Not only am I having issues connecting, it's like right now, it, 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 sometimes it'll show up and it say connected, and then it says disconnected. So I'll try to connect. All right. Now it says it's connected. All right. It's connected. But no matter what. No lights, no RGB. I have never seen this on another keyboard. I don't know if it's because this one is defective somehow. I mean, like I said, that, that pin that wasn't crimped in there, the JST is making a connection, so it can't be that. We know that the LEDs work. Why would, I mean, is that a battery saving thing? I mean, no lights if I'm on wireless? I mean, come on. So that's either a defect on this individual unit or it's bad design for all units i can't say because i don't have another one on hand um and, and the via file i tried to load it on use via and it wouldn't even load up so I, I probably need to spend a little bit more time with that uh but despite how good this keyboard looks and it's gonna sound pretty good i think in the sound test i can't recommend it i honestly can't like i said i don't know if i received a de defective unit, Sea-Doo, if you guys are watching, and you can say, oh, you know, that one must have missed QC or whatever, and you want to send me out a different one, I'll give it another shot, but this one's going back because it is defective. I don't, or, or it's either a defect or a design issue because, I mean, if I'm in Bluetooth mode, I should still be able to have RGB, you know? I mean, it's not like you put an RGB here just, you know, for when you're plugged, I, I, I don't get it. I get it. All of my boards that are wireless, RGB works the same, whether connector, Bluetooth, or whatever. Um, some of them won't turn on until you actually connect to a device. But once it's connected, I have the choice of having my RGB on or off. So, and it says nothing about it in the manual. So, is it a defect? I don't know. So. Unfortunately, I was I was looking forward to this review because I thought this was going to be, hey, look at this, um, I don't know, this Zoom 65 wannabe. I don't do group buys. I shouldn't have to make any compromises. If I'm buying a mechanical keyboard in today's day and age, there's a 99% chance that I, as a consumer, am going to want to get in there, whether it's just to flip out switches, a plate, put tape on the back of the PCB, put something on the bottom of the case to, create, to get rid of hollowness. Um, lube this whatever whatever the case may be it's we purchased it so if we want to you know retrofit it work it that should be our choice and the manufacturer shouldn't prevent us from doing it or make it you know put barriers to doing that so or you know when you do two connectors not properly crimp a JST connector and then not have QA or I mean is it was there QA QC for this I don't know as is, I just, I can't recommend this keyboard. I'm not keeping it. I'm sending it back. If Sea-Doo 
sees this and they want to give, you know, have me have another chance with one that actually works. Like if this is defective, I mean, because if you guys designed it this way, why? Why would you design it for it to not have any RGB when it's in Bluetooth mode? I mean, people don't buy RGB only to use it when they're plugged in. So, anyway, I, I, I hate to be negative, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that a product is much better. I'm not a show. I'm not, I'm not doing this to, um, to make money. Uh, I'm doing this because I enjoy keyboards and I get to test a lot of keyboards. And I also... I like the fact that I get to buy duds or test out duds and prevent people from having to go through, you know, wasting time on a dud, you know, putting at time, effort, money into something that actually eventually doesn't work because of A, B, C, or D, something that I can uncover prior to them purchasing it so they don't have to go through it. If I can do that for at least one person per video, I think I'm, you know, I'm achieving something because I would like to know. And I know that I have had in d different product categories, I've had, oh, I really want to buy this, but let me go and check out this guy's review on it. And, oh, I didn't, oh, oh, and then I find out some things and I'm like, thankfully I didn't buy it. And months down the line, I see a whole bunch of people, you know, complaining their product's dead, whatever, be it a phone, be it a computer, be it a video card that sets your computer on fire. It's best to know. And all I'm going to do is continue to share uh, obviously my subjective opinion but the objective truth of what actually comes in the keyboard so sorry for going off on a rant um like i said i i, I expected a lot more from this keyboard uh and i'm i'm honestly just disappointed i i, I mean when i can get a 30 dollars keyboard that has per key rgb uh, wireless bluetooth you know, and actually has RGB when it's connected and doesn't prevent me from getting in there. You know, I know plastic, but still, it just, this, this doesn't, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a, um, a sound test of uh, this uh, CDU V65. Until next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.